Welcome to another issue of Sword Sharpening by Learning to Serve Ministries. We hope you will open your mind and heart to God's Word as it is applied here without interference of man or seminary. Our motto is Pure Bible, No Compromise. Please visit us at www.learningtoserve.net for more lessons covering the pure truth of Scripture and an intimate relationship with our Father, Jehovah, His Son, Yeshua, and the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. We see the Bible as a sword to be used for both offensive and defensive measures, and the sword sharpening lessons help us to better understand why we believe what we do. Blessings as you receive this lesson. In today's Truth About the Quran lesson, we're going to be looking at Surah 4 and verse 171, where we'll find three very good nuggets of information for the Christian. Let's begin by looking at the surah. It says, O people of the scripture, do not commit excess in your religion, or say about Allah except the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, was but a messenger of Allah and his word which he directed to Mary, and a soul created at a command from him. So believe in Allah and his messengers, and do not say three. Desist, it is better for you. Indeed, Allah is but one God. Exalted is he above having a son. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. And sufficient is Allah as disposer of affairs. So let's look at the important part in there in blue now. It says the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, was but a messenger of Allah. Or in other words, was nothing more than a messenger or a prophet of Allah and his word which he directed to Mary and a soul created at a command from him. So we see clearly here Jesus' deity denied. Jesus of the Quran, which is not capitalized here in order to denote the difference from Jesus of the Bible, is said to be no more than a prophet. In other words, people of the scripture, to use the Quranic term, that's you, Mr. or Mrs. Christian, are wrong to insinuate that he is anything more than that. So, in Islam, the son of the God that does not have a son is not even a God, but merely a prophet, rendered messenger in the translation we just used. So tell me, how is it that God, of the Bible, of course, would write one book for the people of the Scripture, the Bible, exalting his son and proclaiming his mission as Savior, and then write another book, the Quran, with totally contradictory writings about his son to denigrate his status as such? The answer is, of course, he would not, and he did not. The Quran is not holy. It is not inspired by God, of the Bible, and it does not in any way address or talk about Jesus Christ of the Bible. It is satanic in origin and is meant to trip up and fool those who will not read the scripture to find the truth for themselves. I'm using the same verse as the previous. The Quran clearly denies the concept of the Trinity, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Look at the blue parts here. It says, and do not say three, desist, it is better for you. Indeed, Allah is but one God. Now we know that the Trinity is supported in the Scripture. The Bible is clear that God is one God, as we see in Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. But there's a huge difference between the way God purports himself in the Bible versus the God of Islam. The God of the Bible manifests himself as a trinity, consisting of a father, a son, and a Holy Spirit, a Ruach HaKodesh in Hebrew. And in fact, Jesus of the Bible is clearly called God in the first verse of the book of John. As we see, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word, as described here in John 1.1, 1, 1, is Jesus of the Bible. And here, as well as many other places, he is called God and Lord. And we also know that the Holy Spirit is a member of the Trinity because Jesus specifically mentions him in the book of Matthew. In Matthew uh, chapter 12 and verse 32, he says, And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost... It shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So, one more time at Surah 4, 171. Again, look at the blue parts, and this one, perhaps the most important. It says, Exalted is he above having a son. 
You know, this should be the end of the discussion, and there should be no further need for this video or for any further study about this subject. The God of Islam does not have a son. Clearly, it says that. There, it's clear now he cannot be the same as the God of the Bible. Wait, no? Is that not enough for you? Well, don't feel left out because it isn't enough for those who regularly teach the Chrislam heresy either. So for your sake and theirs, let's look at it one final time. Just as with the Bible, there are many translations of the Quran. Notice I never use the term holy in conjunction with the Quran. It is not a holy book. I'm not going to debate which is better or worse of the translations because none of the quotes I've used are arguable. They're very clearly indisputable. This one shows irrefutably that the God of Islam does not have a son. This verse is speaking of the God of Islam's highly exalted position and that he cannot have a son. The truth behind this verse, however, is even worse than it sounds at face value. So let's look a little deeper. To state that the God of Islam has a son is, in the erroneous viewpoint of the Muslim, to state that he came down and had sexual relations with a woman who later gave birth to a son. This accusation is called a shirk, and it's considered the highest form of blasphemy that one can make in Islam. How dare one consider that the God of Islam would lower himself to defile himself with a human woman? What's worse is this, again, in the mind of the Muslim, insinuates that the God of Islam has a male reproductive organ. This is yet another strong point in discovering the true difference between the God of Islam and the God of the Bible, Jehovah, because it completely omits the idea of the virgin birth of Jesus, of Yeshua. In fact, the virgin birth is the most important part of his incarnation because the prophecies given of him prior. Praise God if your eyes have been opened by these talking points. When confronted with one of these Chrislam proponents, I urge you to stand your ground and force them to see the truth, the real Jesus of Scripture, and to stop denying him through compromise. I urge you to read his word, know his son, Jesus of the Bible, and know the counterfeits and the counterfeit teachers when you see them. Call them on their wrongs and demand that men of God take a stand once again to uphold obedience to God's word and worship him in spirit and in truth. Demand nothing less and always remember, Jesus is not in the Quran.